remove all um, assorted food, okay? And you can choose to fast for the entire day. So that would be 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Or you can fast and break your fast at noon with us, okay? And so those are the various options for you to fast in. And so I'm just going to go ahead and start off first for us to go to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray to hush in the Holy Spirit into our presence and our hearts and our mind as we prepare to pray and fast. All right, let us go to the Lord. Heavenly Father, first, I just want to thank you for this opportunity for us to come together to pray together and just to be in unity with one mind and one heart. I thank you for the Holy Spirit that revealed to us that we are your children and guide us and teach us the way we should go. As we gather here today to fast and pray, we ask in the name of Jesus that you open our heart and mind to the things you want us to see and do. Grant us, O Heavenly Father, a divine intervention into this session of fasting and prayer, opening up our hearts and giving us new message and understanding from you. As we surrender to your words, I ask into the name of Jesus that we acknowledge our fasting for you, that you will open up our heart and grant us the desire to know you more. Thank you, Holy Father, for all you have done for us, our health and our strength. Thank you for this technology that allows us to come together to pray together. Thank you, Holy Father God, that we can depend on you in all things to be with us. Thank you just for loving us and for being who you are. We acknowledge that you alone are God. We acknowledge that you alone are whom we can provide our refuge and strength in. We acknowledge your Father God that because of your love for us, we can come before you today because of sacrifice you made on behalf of us. Thank you, Holy Father God. And as we go into your word, guide us and lead us in the wisdom of understanding that we need to take. As we open up our hearts and our mind to fast and pray, Help us to do it in the right way that is pleasing to you and not to ourselves. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 All right, so good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to those of you who are online and on Zoom. If you are online, please go ahead and put your name in the chat. Okay. Please go ahead and put your name in the chat so that So that it can, you know, I can recognize and know who you are and just to welcome you to our fasting and praying. So this is our first Wednesday for our fasting and praying session. And as I said before, you can fast all day or you can fast and break at noon with us while we fast and pray. As we start off in this, the next time we will meet is on Friday at noon. So every Wednesday and Friday, you can join us right here on Zoom or online to fast and pray with us. Since today is the first Wednesday, I just want to quickly touch base on some of the things that we are doing. I like, why do we fast? As we know, fasting can humble ourselves before God. Fasting also allows us to draw close to the God. But over the here, fasting has taken so much different reason and so much different type of session and so much different understanding of what it really means. Sometimes people see fasting as dieting. Sometimes people see fasting as something they do because everyone is doing it. You know, like your church is doing the dining of fasting, you fast with them. So there is so much reason for us to fast. But ultimately, the reason why you should fast is to draw yourself closer to God, to have a deeper relationship with God, humbling yourself before him and coming before him. There are times in my past that I have not fasted for right reason and I had to learn from my mistake like sometimes I will fast because I need something specific from God there's nothing wrong with that but it's almost like putting God on the spot and saying since I fast I want you to do this <laughs> and so we have to be mindful of the reason behind our fasting and so I want you to know that this Wednesday and Friday session we are fasting to draw us closer to God we are fasting to open up our hearts to God we are fasting to humble ourselves because God said my, my people were called by my name will humble themselves pray turn from their wicked way 
then I will heal their land. And we all need healing into our life, healing and restoration into our churches. And I believe one way that we can do that is by fasting and praying. As we go to each Wednesday and Friday, I do have some guest speakers, especially Pastor Rosalind Cosby. She is from Adam Chapel AME Church. So the both of us will be leading you to all these Wednesdays and Fridays, and we will have additional guest speakers as we go along. So be prepared to break your fast with us and have the Holy Spirit shows up into your day. I know that every Wednesday and Friday you are going to be anointed, not just because of we who are speaking, but because the atmosphere is going to be one where our heart and our mind is open up to receive everything that God has for us. And there are times in our life when we get so busy that we don't have that time to usher in the presence of God. And so I know this will happen because we are surrendering ourselves to God. We are saying, God, I need you. So I'm humbling myself and fasting and praying. And so you hear some of the things that we do to fast and the reason to fast. When Jesus fast, he was actually led by the Holy Spirit to fast. So sometimes we fast because like this, the church is doing it together to bring unity and love, encouragement, and allowing the spiritual enforcement to be among the people of God. That's why we fasting and praying. As we go into the fasting and praying, the days that you fast and pray, you want to start doing something different because then it will just be avoid eating food. Fasting is not just avoid eating food. You want it to be open up to various new things, you know, such as your fasting should be at that day you fast, you're going to decide, oh, I'm not going to um, watch any TV. I'm not going to play any movie. I'm not going to play video games. I'm not going to, I don't know, go out and have fun. On the day you fast, you want to let that time be. Hey, God, I am setting this time apart for you. I'm using the time that I used to eat food to surrender to you. The day you fast, you should be praying more. You should be talking to God more. You should be listening to music more. And so I think that sometimes we get lost into the concept of fasting that we actually forget that we are doing it for God. There are times when we just like, okay, I'm fasting today. So I am not going to eat anything until noon. You. I'm not going to eat anything until 6 p.m. But what are you doing for God during that time is of ultimate importance. Your fasting, if it is for you to grow a deeper relationship with God, you should use that time to get in his presence to talk about him a little bit more, which is why I'm going to jump over on the scripture. And this scripture is coming from Zechariah chapter 7. Zechariah chapter 7. And I am going to read from verses... Four to verses seven, all right? That Zechariah chapter seven, I'm going to be reading from verses four to seven using the New Living Translation. Here is what the word of God says. It says, the Lord of heaven army send me this message in reply. Say to all your people and your priests, during these 70 years of exile, when you fasted and mourn in the summer and in early autumn, was it really for me that you are fasting? And even now in your holy festival, aren't you eating and drinking just to please yourself? Ooh. Isn't this the same message the Lord proclaimed to the prophet in hears? When Jerusalem and the town of Judah were bustling with people, and the never and the foothill of Judah were well populated. And so, as I read this scripture, I want to touch base on when you fast. Why are you fasting? Are you fasting for God? Or are you fasting for yourself? The people of Israel was in exile. And so they fast every 70 years, even while they were in exile, because they said, this is what God commanded me. So this is the whole concept is that they were fasting. It's not that they weren't doing the action of fasting. They were doing the action of fasting, but their art was not set in the place that it should be. So God says, when you were fasting, is it really for me? We have to acknowledge our fasting is done for God or if it's done for ourselves. 
And that's why I want to encourage you, as we begin this Wednesday and Friday fasting and praying, I want you to remember it is for God, for us to please God. Come with it for the mindset that today I am fasting and praying because I want to have a relationship with God. Today I'm fasting and praying because I want to hear from God. Today I'm fasting and praying because I want God to show up into my life. Regardless of the reason why you're fasting and praying, it must come back to the ultimate reason, which is for God. And God asked these people, while you were fasting and praying, you see, it, didn't, it makes no difference when they were eating and drinking in the Holy Festival. They have Holy Festival and they eat and drink, and then they fast. But all of that was for themselves because they didn't acknowledge God all day. And so we can do that too. We can say, okay, today I'm fasting for God. Whether we are fasting from 6 a.m. to noon or we are fasting from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., we spend some time in the morning and then that's it. We don't acknowledge God. Fasting should be a time where we are acknowledging God. It should be the day that we are reading our word of God more. You know, it should be the day that we are praying more. I know it's not easy because while you're fasting, you're still doing the stuff that you did yesterday, the day before. And so you, your mindset has to be shifted. Your mindset should be, in this day, everything I do will be to give God the glory. And so the way that we can do that is that when you wake up on the day that you're fasting, the first thing you want to do is acknowledge that that day is the day that you're humbling yourself before God. That is the day that you are given a food and liquid just to allow the Holy Spirit to fill your body and mind. That is the day that you're going to let go of every other distraction into the world and just focus mostly on God. Yes. And when you acknowledge that this is the day that you're fasting, you also have to do something important. Because as human, we are weak. We will get caught up in the day and then we will forget, hey, I'm fasting. And then you'll be like, oh, I forgot that that's what I was doing today. And so as you seek to fast, you know, you want to surrender yourself over to God in prayer talking to him, acknowledging him. You know, if you're always on your cell phone, then you can go to your cell phone and you can just read your Bible. You know, you can just say, this day I am fasting. On the day we fast, we should be reading the word of God more than the days that we are not. And the day we fast, we should be talking to God more than the days we are not. And so your whole day and for the whole time that you're fasting, you should bring God into it. I know it's not easy, but we have to find ways to do that or else our fasting is meaningless. And then God is going to ask you just like he asks the people here. When you fast, is it really for me? And it's, yes, it is hard. But when we acknowledge God in our fasting, when we just set that time apart just for him, then he will show up into some amazing way. Because in that time, we are humbling ourselves. We are recognizing our weakness. And when you fast, yes, it is hard. It's a struggle. But during that time of fasting, we are seeking God from, for our strength. We are saying, God, I need you to give me the strength I need so I can complete this fast with you today. So we acknowledge God and we are depending fully on God. So when that stomach start grumbling, you pray. When the stomach start getting upset, you pray. And so it's a whole process of just involving God in all the issue, especially those people who said, you know, I'm going to try to fast, but I have to take this medicine. That said, I can't take it on my empty stomach. What do I do? Go to God. You will be surprised what your faith will lead you to, that God will allow you to participate in the fast because you know your heart is in the right place. And so as we talk about the acknowledging God, we want to reason behind our fasting. And the one ultimate reason can be just to get a close to relationship with God. But you can also fast for other reasons, such as you need healing from sickness, such as you have um, a spiritual warfare going on and you know you have to fast and pray to bring into the power in the midst of God humbling your mind and body and allowing God to take full control in the places that you are struggling with so regardless of the reason why you're fasting when you get on your knee and surrender to God and he will empower you and give you everything that you need to work with him just acknowledge him and saying God I am setting the side of court for you for me to fast and pray I am giving 
giving up food, I am giving up this, I'm giving up all of these things for you in this moment, in this day, in this time. Grant me the strength, the wisdom, and the discernment of how to do this. Many times we get on to do things for God because we read it in the Bible or because somebody told us. And that's what happened to the people of Israel. God said fast every four, every 70 days into the law. Also, have these holy days. But they end up doing it all for themselves, even though they were directly following the things into the law. But why it falls like that is that eventually as human, our mind will just shift. Our mind will shift to what we design. And so on the day you fast, what you can do is first surrender that day to God. Let him know from the moment you wake up out of your bed that God, this is the day that I am surrendering to you. I am humbling myself in fasting and praying. One thing I do notice about the Bible is that most people who fast, they're always fasting and mourning, meaning that you, are, you have um, an inner sadness an inner sadness that you want to bring before God. And so when you do that, when you are allowing God to just open you up and get that inner sadness in you, is that mean you, for that day, it doesn't matter what goes on in the world. It's just between you and God. So surrender the day to God. Let God in. Let him know that this time I am setting apart for you. This is the day I want to fast and pray. And so you pray and ask God to give you the strength that you need to make it through these days. You ask him to direct your step as you go. So you all ask him to ask, ask him to let your mind come back and refocus on him. And doing fasting, try to pray in a different way. We have been learning about center prayer during our church. It's a powerful thing. If we allow the center prayer, we can do center prayer, we can do regular prayer. But during the day of fasting, try to do it in a different way. Read your Bible in a different way. Whatever you used to do, maybe now you could sit down and study. Um, the day that you fast could be also your Bible study day. It could be the day that you decided to get more deeper into God's word. But what I want to encourage you to do is to do something different. Acknowledging that this is the day that you are setting apart to fast and pray to build your relationship with God. And so that's that's the suggestion that I have. Wake up and start with God. Acknowledge the day for God. Ask him to give you the strength that you need and seek him out throughout the day in prayer and reading of the words. Shift the things, some, some of the things that you do on that day should be shift. And so if you know you always sit down and watch your favorite movie in the evening, until your fast is over, don't do those things that are bringing you pleasure. Until your fast is over, don't do anything that you know is not bringing honor to God. That way you can fill that day and that hour of things that belongs to God. Amen. And so that's the word I have for you on this fast day, this first Wednesday where we are fasting and praying. And I pray that it brings you some wisdom and understanding and some desire of how you can surrender over completely to God and fast and pray. And I'm going to I'm going to close in prayer and then just open the floor right now for everyone to give some reflection and some feedback. If you're on Zoom or if you're online, you can put it in the chat. And then if you're on Zoom, you can speak for it and give in your reflection. Amen. But before that, let me go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I first just want to thank you. Thank you for the wisdom of your words and the understanding that it brings to us. Thank you, O oh Father God, that we have many ways that we can come before your presence. At this time, I pray in the name of Jesus that everyone who is praying with me right now will surrender their heart and mind to you to be filled of your Holy Spirit. I'm asking for transformation into our thinking, in our way, and our mindset. Allow us to come before you and humble ourselves into the right way. We have a limited, oh Father God, we have a limited understanding of the things that we can do to please you. So bring forth that wisdom and understanding acknowledgement and discernment into our mind so that we can do this in the right way. Father God, I just pray that as we fast, that you will acknowledge our fasting as a way that we are seeking to know you and grow closer to you, and that you will send forth your Holy Spirit inside of us to revive us and strengthen us. I pray that whatever reason that the person is fasting for, that you will grant it to them, that in the name of Jesus, that you will strengthen us, in the name of Jesus, that you will restore us everything that we have lost, because 
because you alone are God. And we acknowledge and humble ourselves before you. I just ask that you be mindful of us, that you will bless us, and that you will keep us. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. And so at this time, I am just going to open the floor and our Zoom and our online session. For those who would like to give feedback on the lesson today of fasting and praying, and the scripture was from Zechariah 7, verses 4 to 7. Amen. Do I have any feedback, any comment? Anyone want to share? 